Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more BSL Season 15 Asian Championships. We are in Group A, and this is the winner's match. Whoever wins here goes on to the bracket phase of this tournament. In the top left, we have just the Dynamite Protoss player. Really one of my favorite non-Korean players at this point. It's Jean Hun. And his opponent in the bottom right. One of the most famous and well-accomplished Zergs in the Chinese region. It's Jedi. Dude, I'm actually, I'm I'm quite excited about this. Uh, you know, John Hun, I had such a great time casting his games in BSL Season 14. He's such an interesting Protoss, really looks at it in his own way. And how is he going to do against Jedi? You know, one thing I do want to mention uh, is that I think that the Asian Championships will look a lot different from BSL. Uh, now, obviously, like, the players play really differently, but I think that that has thrown off a lot of the top Europeans and North Americans and, and South Americans as well uh, when they play against the Chinese players. Whereas the Chinese players, you know, they kind of have their own scene in a lot of ways. They really are going to know better how each other play. So they, it's going to be, like, the moves that they make, I think, will be more expected from each other. Whereas, like, for instance, if you look at Mew, who's bizarre style, just the, the foreign Protosses uh, in the regular BSL scene from, you know, Europe, North America, all that, um, they just, they don't really know how to deal with it. Whereas, for instance, like, we, you know, if, if we see, like, John Hoon playing against him, I think that we're seeing a, a game that is a little bit more figured out by, by John Hoon. But anyways, all that being said... Uh, you know, I haven't gotten to see Jedi versus Jean Hun ever before. I mean, I just learned about Jean Hun in the last season. Jedi wasn't in it, so here we go. I've, ooh, the probe dies. So nice micro there by Jedi. I, I wasn't really commenting on because I didn't think that was going to happen, but he stayed too long there. That denial, not worth, unfortunately. Uh, the pool is done. We have Zerglings being made, and, you know, the Forge coming up. So everything looks normal. Everything looks fine. Uh, yeah, this this would have been overpool based on the timing of this. Wasn't really paying attention to that, but uh, just to mention, the map is Overwatch. We've seen it a couple times uh, in Group A already, but, I mean, it was just, like, rushy Zerg versus Zerg and Protoss versus Protoss, so we didn't get to talk about it too, too much, but here we'll talk about it a bit more, right? So it is a two-player map. Uh, you have this small bridge, but you also have this bigger corridor, which leads to a third base location here. Uh, Protoss, like for, for Jean Hun, his third base will be here. Whereas for Jedi, we can see he's already thinking about taking this as his third. And Zerg has a little bit more leeway there where they have multiple locations that can be taken. But yeah, for Jean Hun, like this would be far too far away for him to take realistically, unless we already have a huge monster contain over here. Speaking of which, this is a high ground uh, area right here. And there's the third base up there. We'll we'll see more as they scout up in that area. But you can occasionally see containments put on here, just like in circuit breakers. If you think of the third base that's over the or the the, the third base that's a mineral only, and then the high ground over it, this is kind of similar. So there is that possibility. In that case, I guess we could see Jean Hun expand down to here, but it doesn't seem like a very likely scenario. So Jedi does take this as his third. Let's take a look at his tech. He has that layer on the way. The thing I'm worried about here for Jean Hun, he lost that probe so quickly. How do you know that there's not Hydras on the way? He has no vision of the map. Look at this. This is his world. He knows that there's two Zerglings. He knows that there's a couple hatches down here. There's a bug in StarCraft, by the way, where when you turn off vision, you just don't get to see what they've seen. Um... <laughs> but you know, that's all he knows, right? Like, there could be a Hydra's den. For all he knows, Hydra's are, are going to be made shortly here. So he is going to get that Stargate ASAP. The Corsair are going to fly down immediately to try to see anything incoming. And in fact, it's Zealot being made. He may send this on an almost suicide mission across the map to try to get some intel. Because really, again, you do need to figure out what your opponent's doing. Now, lucky for him, Jedi is not doing anything too crazy here. Uh, he is getting Zergling speed, making a few more Zerglings to make sure that Zealot's not a problem, but he did get the layer. Looks like a Spire is going to go down behind the Mineral Patch. There it is. But will he end up going Mutas? We do not know as of yet. Could just be a, uh, you know, Force Scourge to push everything back into Hydra. Let's see what Jedi's style is going to be. All right, the third Zealot is coming out.
And some nice map awareness, right? Like the speedlings, the overlords. Really getting all over the place, just checking uh, like all these little areas to see, oh, is a zealot like tucked away? Is there something ready for a little counterattack? That type of thing. It's very rare that you see proxy buildings out on the map in this matchup from Protoss. It just almost never happens. I can think of one pro game I've seen it in. Uh, later on, there was like one ASL game where Rain did it against the Zerg for like a, a hidden robo, basically, for a quick DT drop, uh, which was a very cool game on Neosilphid. Definitely would recommend that one, but um, not going to be the case here. Zalot's coming down along with this Corsair, headed towards the base. Going to find a macro hatch. The Spire is almost done. The Speedlings are actually, like, pretty far out of position. This is going to be really annoying. He can get these Zalots right back behind the mineral line. And, of course, the drones do have to be drilled away. Now, does he try to chase? Okay, ooh, doesn't quite get that good pull by Jedi. But now the Zealots are going to go back here, and they're basically invincible. This is so annoying to deal with. I actually honestly wouldn't be surprised to see, like, a sunken go down. Because this feels so inefficient to attack into. No? Okay. Throws a gas down. He is getting carapace. Fire carapace. So the fire carapace generally points towards Mutalists being made. There's no way to scout that. Zerg buildings don't act different when they're upgrading. A few Scourge are being made. A single Mutalisk as well. So the Mutalisk is going to force the Zealots out, basically. Ooh, gets a drone. Nice moves there by Jean Hun. More Zealots coming across the map. Does have that plus one attack on the way. Plus one air. And uh, the Zealot legs as well. So here's that Mutalisk. Now, just because he made one doesn't mean that there will be more. But yeah, he just needed this to make sure he could deal with these Zealots. Okay, kills them off. But more Zealots up here. Sunken on the way, but it's taking massive damage here. Nice drone drill here by Jedi. Disrupts them greatly. Does turn around and snap a drone neck. And it looks like that will be picked off. All the, the Zealots, that is. The one Mutalisk, man. <laughs> I can't remember the Mutalisks. <laughs> I can't remember the Mutalisk's uh, hero name in the campaign or whatever. Like in the map editor, every unit has a hero unit. And there is a, a Mutalisk one. And I wish I could remember it, not for the life of me. But that's who this guy is right now. One Mutalisk made, Carapace on the way for him to chase away those Zealots. Now, a fair amount of Corsairs have been made. He's still getting the plus one air attack, which I like. He has six, and so that's going to be fantastic. That's a really good number of Corsairs. Five with plus one two-shot Scourge. So that's a... It's very healthy, very good looking. The Muta just going to go across the map for a scout. So very likely a one-way mission. Corsairs, I think, will turn around. Ooh! Takes one hit there. Oh, look at that harass. Seriously. <laughs> this one Mutalisk, man. I'm such a... I'm, oh, no! I was such a fan of that Mutalisk. He, he did fantastically. Now, Jedi is macroing very heavily into Hydra from here. Range on the way. Uh, he does have his plus one attack coming up as well. The Carapace is almost done. The four Corsairs here... Or six Corsairs, rather. Dive on those Overlords. They do get a pick. Two uh, Overlords very, very low on health there as well. Oh, losing a couple more. That's a little bit dangerous. So he's down to four, but he still has four. So that's, it's good that he still has them. Because don't forget, Carapace is done. So as High Templars pop out, it's a very good chance that we'll actually see a small group of mutas. Well, not, I shouldn't say small. I think you, you generally make like eight at least uh, to pick off High Templars. But I think that we probably will see that out of Jedi, right? Like he's reduced that Corsair count reasonably. Now, Jean Hun, good amount of High Templars. The Zealots out here as well. Seven gates, eight gates, plus one armor is on the way. His storm almost done. Getting ready to take that third base location like I was talking about. This is going to be the normal third base for Protoss. This is that high ground area. Oh, my God, this says BSL on it. What a nice touch. Well deserved, too. Big cheers to Zero for running BSL. Such an important tournament for the scene. Nice around there on those Hydras, but they are doing their job, right? Like, he's trying to get some High Templar pickoffs. 
you don't want to let them continue to grow that high templar amount right like as the quality of the protoss army continues to grow if like they retain their high templars over time and they're all getting multiple storms that's going to be something zerg is not able to deal with So a few little speed lots running around, but it seems like there's enough defense everywhere, right? This group of Hydras, well, I guess you can kind of chase down. Maybe you pick one or two off, but I don't think it's that impactful for Jedi. One thing to mention is that Jedi's drone count is not super, super high. It is on 30, and he's producing a lot of Hydras right now, but uh, yeah, not quite where he wants it, I think. Whereas Jean Hun sitting here on a nice... 47, continuing to make some probes as well, getting this third base up. His economy is really going to be rolling here soon. Looks like we do have a little building pickoff here. Make some better uh, flow of those units going in and out. Another Corsair has actually been made, by the way. Interesting little thing to throw out. So he, hey, John Hoon's keeping it in mind that we might possibly see a little group of Mutalists made to pick off his High Templars. So really cool to see. Now, this Hydralisk Swarm is coming up. He has a couple over here at the wall for some reason. More going through the center. And, yeah, he's not going to be able to break all these speed lots up a ramp, as well as cannons and a High Templar. All right, the Hydra's going to try to break in from two different sides. A nice storm goes off on this bottom group. Oh, my God. Is he actually going to be able to break in? No storm left on this High Templar. If he shoves everything up here, he will break it. Oh, my God. But there is a counterattack from Janu going on in the bottom right here. Huge moves from both players. Jonhun getting that damage done. 11 Hydras are on the way, but that is a lot of Zealots to deal with with 1-1 one -one upgrades. A lot of his Hydras actually sitting at this third base. Overlords being popped left and right. And even though he got rid of these cannons, it looks like John Hun's reinforcements are going to clear those out. Oh my god, the Zealot counterattack just dealing too much damage. The Corsair is on top of everything else. Looks like some of them will be caught off here. Can he actually stabilize? Okay, these Hydras are picking off the last of the Corsairs. Looks like one is left over. Only a couple Zealots left over here as well in the main base. But he's down to 20 drones. He lost 10 drones during that, whereas Jan Hun gained three net probes. Jan Hun up on three bases now. No additional hatches here for Jedi. And he's just making Hydras. Okay, I think he just goes all in from here. There's not like another play, I don't think. Like, how do you how would you ever look at the production tab? Just so much being made from John Hun. He's getting his Dragoon range, Kadiran amulet for more Templar energy. Observers are coming out. Additional cannons. He's on Dragoon Templar at this point, which, you know, we've seen is really, really strong. Range showed us that in the ASL. A lot of Overlords coming up. May as well. But yeah, I mean, you're not going to break this third base. There's no way. Look at this, down 20 workers at half the supply. Jedi, his one move left is an attack. Storm goes down, a massive storm indeed, another massive storm. His Dragoon's dealing so much damage, no way to really dodge everything coming in from John Hoon. And it really does look like John Hoon should be able to take game number one. Kind of an interesting one, uh, but John Hoon just holding on tight, that counterattack, doing a great job, and John Hoon leads one to zero.